Okay, Ham Radio 2.0. This is uh, this is the video from Flex Radio. My, I'm going to interview Michael Walker from Flex Radio. And this video, along with several others that are going to be posted this week, are the prequel videos for the YouTubers Ham Fest coming up on May 23rd. Okay, so check the links in the description below for uh, links to, to flexradio.com. Check, um, check youtubershamfest.com so that we can, um, so that you guys can have all of the information about what time the event starts, which channel is going to be premiering, uh, who's going to be on each channel as a guest, and what the uh, pre-planned URL to YouTube to the YouTube live stream will be. So this is going to be a fun event. We, <laughs> all of us YouTubers, have been looking very forward to this. It's going to be fun. I'm going to have Flex Radio on first thing Saturday morning. This is a prequel to that, so check it out, and I hope you enjoy it. So just, I know you're getting together with Kyle on Sunday to talk about remote operations, yeah. and that's great. Um, so if we can talk about something besides remote operations, that way we get a more ra uh, more well-rounded view of, you know, what Flex Radio does. Because I know that, I mean, Flex Radio obviously does great with the remote, but that's not all you do. So No, let me try this. Um, we know that any radio you buy today is probably a really good radio. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. You know, there's nothing wrong with any radio. Now we're splitting hairs. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, it's coming down to the point, can we really hear the difference? And in some cases we can, in some cases we can't. Right. But Good deal. All right. Well, thank you, Michael, for joining us today. We're going to be posting this video, um, and I'll do a short intro here after we're done so that I know fresh in my head what we're going to talk about. Uh, but, but this video will post probably on, let me look at my calendar here, probably on Monday the 18th. May 18th, okay. Monday, and I'm going to start my week off with a bang with Flex Radio. We're all into it, and I'm going to post a, probably a new video almost every day that week leading up to the YouTubers Ham Fest that starts at 8 a.m. Eastern time on May 23rd, that following Saturday. So you're going to hear, so the video that you're about to watch now is going to be Flex Radio stuff, and then Flex Radio is also going to come on to the live stream on Saturday, May 23rd, so it's all going to be a big uh yeah let's do let's do a bunch of stuff with flex radio which i'm really excited about because i really like y'all's system um right. it, we we really want to keep pushing too by the way because we keep getting the noise that radio flex radios are like five thousand dollars oh yeah that's a good point okay and we want to say no they're under two thousand uh -huh. to get uh -huh. in the game with a you know for lack of a better uh -huh. term contest grade radio correct yeah now okay so I, th that that reminds me of something i've been wanting to ask you for a while now if I say this and you're like, yeah, let's not talk about that. We can cut this out. <laughs> yeah. Here's the thing I realized. The Smart SDR software is free. The Windows-based Smart SDR software, and I, 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 I figured this out a long time ago, but the Windows-based Smart SDR software is free. So when we bought, when I say when we, when I bought my second Flex 6400 and took it to Costa Rica, where it's sitting right now online that we connect to and, and use, and a couple of the guys that go down there with this, one guy's an Elocraft dude. Actually, he's, he flips back and forth between Flex and Elocraft. One guy's a, a Yezu guy. Well, they went and downloaded this smart SDR software, and they connect to my radio, which they've actually helped me pay for now, uh, in Costa Rica. And, you know, we can kind of be on at the same time. Working FT8 with two stations at the same time is a little bit weird with the 6400. Yeah. But, but the smart SDR software is actually free. So where I'm going with this is... Wouldn't that make a really great, and a 6600 would probably be a better option than a 6400, but wouldn't that really make a great club EOC radio that you could then allow your club members to download and connect to and kind of like assign times where you can go here, especially on field day? You know, that kind absolutely. of Absolutely. Okay. A absolutely. Yeah. We actually have a video on the website called My Friend Said I Could Borrow Their Flex Radio. <laughs> okay, there you okay, go. Okay, and then, oh, where do I get the software? How do I sort of get things working? Right, so, uh, right. Absolutely. We have a club, a couple of clubs I'm working with, and, and as you know, I'm in Toronto. One of them's just uh, in the suburb of Toronto called Mississauga, and the Mississauga Amateur Radio Club has, uh, 
I lent them access to one of my remote radios mm -hmm. and a week later they said, this is amazing. And they're now <laughs> building that exact scenario. Okay. Okay. Excellent. That that's great. You know, that's, um, that's pretty, that's pretty fun to be able to, um, make sure my levels are correct. Yeah. Okay, good. That's pretty fun to be able to offer that because, because once again, the reason I bring that up is because of the whole $5,000 to get into flex radio. Um, it's pretty atypical for software to be free these days for, you know, it depends on what you're talking about. A lot of the Chinese guys give away free software for the DMR radios. Okay. Um, but you know, a lot, but, but there is that stigma behind flex radio that everything's really expensive. And even Elecraft is talking about, you know, they've got a couple of remote apps that I think they're either working on or maybe they've been released and they're talking about charging for it. And, uh, and the Flex Radio iOS app, which is actually not made by you guys. You guys just support it because your customer built it and does a good job with maintaining it. Mm -hmm. um, but the actual Smart SDR Windows app is, is you know, a lot of people didn't realize, I didn't realize that until I bought my first one. I'm like, so I didn't have to log in to download that, and it's not asking me for a license key when I install it. And I'm like, that's kind of cool. And then I went and installed it on two more of my computers and did the same thing. I'm like, and it just worked. And it just worked. Yeah, no problems <laughs> at all. So now I get yeah. to connect yep. to to the 6400 sitting under my desk, and also to the one in Costa Rica at the same time. Well, not the same time. Yeah, but have that I know what list. you mean. The um, the radio is actually like the license key. If you've ever worked in software, some you know some yeah. companies had dongles you had to carry around as a key. While well, the right. radio becomes the key. Right. The radio remembers what maximum version license it has. Okay. Two or three. Um, and so, would you sell your radio and say it's got version three, or if there's a version four or five or six or seven, that license key goes with the radio? And yeah, I get people calling me all the time saying, uh, "What do I hear for the software?" Oh, nothing. You know, it's just we like to think of it and when they designed it long before my time they thought of it like well what if i sell my radio well we want the radio solution to go to the next person right much like you picked up your fd 101 zd mm -hmm. and sold it to the next guy right and right he gets on the air so right yeah no totally totally uh, that, that that's a mm. good point okay cool all right we'll talk more about the whole uh you said you get that question a lot with the flex radio cost five thousand dollars thing so oh. Yeah, so um, it was actually on Facebook the other day. Uh, might have been in some other group. I wa I monitor a lot of groups, and I yeah. tend to speak up. Maybe just a little too often, but I do speak up. And <laughs> and you have to remember, I love my job, but I I'm a ham. I love the hobby, yes. and I will jump in from a ham like a ham who's been um, um, mentored before by people, and I'm trying to give some of that back. There's um, I'm a little different. There's a lot of knowledge jam between my ears. I know a lot about a lot of things. I know a lot about what I don't know about a lot of things. So sometimes it comes across a little wrong, but yeah, I've, uh, I'll just, I'll try things. Right now I'm playing with satellites. Six mm -hmm. months from now, I might be trying moon bounds and giving up on satellites. I just, because <laughs> I like the new stuff. And, mm -hmm. and, and I had a high school teacher mention this to me when I was about, I don't know, 17. And he said, uh, you know, you learn a lot from your mistakes. Yeah, I've learned a lot. <laughs> I've made a lot of mistakes right. and, um, we all know that, but I think we, as we maybe get older, we're a little more gun shy and, and don't be, it's, it's really hard to, you know, blow things up today. It's not impossible. Cause I've, um, I've let the magic smoke out of a few things and, <laughs> but, yeah. um, you know, it just makes us wiser. So, um, I, that's my mentoring, um, you know, thing is please help out the younger go and be nice with them on, uh, if you, if you're, mm -hmm. uh, answering them on Facebook, it's a great thing. I hate people say just, well, read the manual. And I like to say, well, it's in the manual, but this is what you want to look for. And this explains some of the terms. And I have so many people come back to me and say, thanks for taking the extra sentence or two to, yeah. to point me in the right direction. So, yeah, yeah. Good. Um, good. So that brings us to the cost of the radio. So, you know, we've had several people say, oh, I don't have $5,000 for a flex radio. And you mm -hmm. don't need $5,000 mm -hmm. for a flex radio. Mm -hmm. They are... Um, well, less than two thousand dollars, and that gives you literally a contest grade radio. Now, what does a contest grade radio mean? It means you could jump in the middle of CQ Worldwide in November, which is a I call that and WPX. They're like slugfests in sideband mode. Yeah. You, know, you, know, you got to yeah. be loud or you won't be heard. Mm -hmm. But traditional radios today and older style, well, you could they're okay, but the receivers fall apart with all this RF energy, and it's really hard to pull the voice that you want to hear. And um, when I first got 
my 6300 uh, back in 2013, 2014, and I got it on the air, and I really got it in the middle of the contest, and I went, and it wasn't remote. It was even just here in the city on a window. And I went, oh, my God, I don't hear the AGC pumping. And what does that mean? Well, the AGC pumping is trying to hear you speak, but there's yeah. going up and down beside you, right? And it's hard to focus. That goes away. Uh -huh. And um, and it just gets better with uh, these direct sampling radios uh, in the Flex, of course, because uh, we handle it differently. We do so much more in software that we couldn't do in, in electronics and hardware. And, uh, and we want to now be um, direct conversion because every mixer, and if you probably remember in, in, in ham radio school, they taught you a little bit about mixers and mm -hmm. eventually down mixing to 455 kilohertz. Usually it was 10.7 megahertz. And then we mix that down to 4.55. So all your filters only had to be on one frequency. Mm. Uh, but if you get rid of mixers, you get rid of noise that you're introducing into the system and that gives you better radio. And so... Yeah, for under two grand US, you get this, you know, contest grade doesn't fall apart in a in a battle radio, and uh, and it, and it it's like yeah, it's easy to use. Um, I don't want people to think it's hard to use, but it's it's the same thing you go through if you flip from Yesu to Kenwood, and you've Yesu Yesu all your life, or you know right. Kenwood to Elecraft. You know, you know, there's a filter in there. You know, I can adjust my CW speed or my or my this or that, you just got to find it. It's usually right. just a little bit different architecture. Right. So that's, uh, but that's what I think is, is it's not expensive radio in, mm -hmm. in for buying. Hopefully we'd like to think one of the last radios you purchased for the next five or 10 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, yeah. Unless uh, you need a second one like I did. <laughs> you need a second one. Well, I always pick on the ICOM 756 series, the pro series. Cause yeah. I had, I had all of them. Oh, gosh. <laughs> so I bought the Pro one when it came out. It was great. And then they came out with the Pro 2, and it had new features. And now I had to sell my less than year or two old Pro one, take a big hit, and throw out, you know, brand new cash dollars, and then repeat it again for a Pro 3. Yeah. And uh, I had the Pro 3 for a long time, and I loved it. And, uh, and again, this is a whole other grade. But now it's the software upgrades as we go from versions mm -hmm. in the Flex world is a couple hundred bucks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's like getting a new radio. Mm -hmm. And uh, and we try to, and we keep working on that to improve mm -hmm. upon it. So. Yeah, good, good. Yeah, um, is there any, uh, you guys are, I think you said you're on 3.11 now, is that? Yeah, working on okay. 3.11. Okay, is there, um, is there plans to go to 4 anytime soon? Is that going to be a major push? It, but is that a couple years out still, you think? I, I can't say, it's policy not to say anything, and I can't, because ah. uh, I don't sit on those planning meetings, but uh, four is always in the back of our heads yeah. uh, of what it might entail. We want to make sure that we, um, uh, that it's, you know, useful for the entire customer base, and it, it's it's a worthwhile value, but we'll continue to work on the three series. Uh, we tend to do a lot of maintenance. Um, we've got a couple of things we want to fix that, that got busted that need to be repaired. So those are priority and mm -hmm. um, they'll be coming. Okay. So, okay. I, unfortunately, yeah. I have to stay that vague because, uh, <laughs> and here's really what happens. If you work in the software industry, you get this. Oh, we're going to release product X by, I don't yeah. know, let's say the end of the month. Mm -hmm. And you get 99% of the way there. <laughs> and it works great but not good enough to release. And I would be lying if I said that we haven't fallen into that trap over the past right. forever. Yeah. And yeah. It, it's just got to be right. I, you know, the, the entire radio industry is a big game of hurry up and wait. I've always said that because every time, even just like, even just like the Chinese uh, releasing a new DMR radio, you're like, oh, we're going to have this in summer of 2020 and then like christmas rolls around you're like man i wish i had one of those in my hand right now <laughs> so yeah hey i can't speak for them but you do yeah. have to be patient yeah but i mean icom icom's done it yezu's done it um you Ella announce Kraft's a new radio and it, it never it never comes out exactly when you want it to i mean that's just that's just the industry i mean as a whole but yeah software is even I mean, yeah, software is that way too, for sure. <laughs> so, yeah, it's it's not like well, even Apple's done it, but it's oh, yeah. you know, here's you take Apple or um, Amazon or anybody in the software business, it's it's the same thing. They've they've lived it. They want, believe me, the salespeople want it out there because it's revenue generating, mm -hmm. right? They they don't hold it up on purpose. It's it's always hold up with with uh, good plans. Um, 
you know, look and like, let's pick on Apple. You know, how many programmers do you think they have? A couple, Microsoft, just a few. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're waiting for Microsoft's, uh, I think their latest flight simulator, it's delayed. And I'm sure they've got a much bigger budget than most of us will ever deal with. And, right. Um, true. True. And it'll come. Yeah. And it just takes time. It's yeah. uh, we joke about it. We call it SMOP, simple matter of programming. But it's <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, a lot more. Okay. Okay. Well, good. Good. All right. Well, hey, you know what? It's um, I'm really excited that you guys are going to be on the stream, uh, on the live stream on May 23rd. Um, in fact, I think you guys are going to be actually first that morning. Nice. So, um, so I think that yeah. So we're we're going to get the the schedule hammered out, um, and it'll be posted on YouTubersHamFest.com. We registered a new domain, and I put up a table there right now. There's not much on there right now. We're going to filter it in as that. We're going to try to have it posted by this weekend which would be a week prior to the, the actual event. So by the time this video posts publicly, I should have, we should have a lot more information up there then than we do now. And I'll send you the, um, we'll do a Zoom call like this and I'll send you the, that info Perfect. that morning so, so we, can, we can all get on the same page there. But, um, but you know what you're doing with Zoom, so I've, I've had to test it with a couple of the other guys I'm talking to and we got all worked out, wasn't any big deal, but you've obviously done this before, so I'm not worried about that part of it. <laughs> no, we've actually been playing with Yardstream too. We don't have an, and for uh-huh. what little it costs and you're what, active in 90 seconds? Right. With a, with a, yeah. with a very simple editor? Yeah, that's all we need. I um I, I I bought one month of that, and I tinkered with it for a while, and I just I get maybe I've been looking at video too long, but but Streamyard is, it caps at 720p. It won't. Oh, go. you were telling me this yeah. last week, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. I don't remember. Yeah, I don't and, remember, and yeah. the resolution sucked. Right. Yeah, and I'm just I can't get past that. I I can't. I mean, <laughs> I've I've been looking. I I did. I was in photography and photo finishing for 15 years before I ever started YouTube. I've been in YouTube for five years now. And I look at it and I see it and I'm like, no, I can't get past it. <laughs> for all intents and purposes, it's not a big deal. If you're, especially if you're streaming with one or two other people on the screen, you're not going to, you're not doing full resolution anyway. So, I mean, you're, you, you know, unless it's just you on the screen, you can't really tell that it's 1080p, but I can tell. I can, and in the back of my mind, I'm like, so um, hopefully they will upgrade that at some point in the future. And if so, I might get on board with that again. Because, yeah, it's very easy. I like the layout of the screen they have. I like how you just send people a link and they join. And you can put them in the chat or put them in waiting and bring them back and put them back, yep. you know, and then share the screens real easy. So it's it's great. I, I really liked it. I just wish it was a little bit higher resolution and I would have been happy. Cool. Well, hey, Michael, thanks, man. I really appreciate it today. This is going to be a good precursor to what's going to go on in the live stream and um, and perhaps uh, after that. So you were talking about um, that game. Well, let me let me let me close this out real quick. Um, so uh, click on the links on Flex Radio in the YouTube description below. Check out all the videos that are going to be posted this week for prequels to what's happening on the YouTubers Ham Fest on May 23rd, starting at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Go to YouTubersHamFest.com to see the entire schedule, and all of the live stream pre-planned links will be shared there as well as soon as we have them. So definitely, hopefully by the time this video airs. So 73, and thanks for watching. It's going to be a blast. Thanks, Jason. It's going to be awesome.